What's going on guys? This is Pierre with Pierre Cohen Piano and today I'm going to teach you all about basic chords. I'm going to be teaching you this in four steps. So first off, what are chords? Chords are basically combinations of two or more notes. For example, we could combine these two notes. Not doesn't sound the greatest, but it is a chord. Um, so no matter how good or bad sounds, if you play two notes together or more, you create what's called a chord. But we're going to be talking about three note chords called triads. They're the most basic types of chords and they we use triads to build almost any other chord beyond the three note triad, which we'll talk about in another video. Today we're just going to be concerned with the two types of triads called major and minor triads. So the first step, you need to know your notes. Uh, I explained this in a previous video, so I'll link that in the description. But basically, we have seven letters of the music alphabet. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And we use the black keys to help us find the white keys. For example, two black keys, two black keys, two black keys. If you find any two black key group, the white key in the middle is going to be a D. All right? So again, go check out that video if you don't know your keys on the piano. Um, and let's move on now to step two. So step two, uh, we're going to be talking about what a half step is. A half step is just the very, very next key in either direction. No matter what, whether it's you're going from a white key to a white key, like from say B to C, uh, we just went up a half step, or say from C to C sharp, those are also half steps. So the distance between any two keys that are right next to each other is called a half step. With that knowledge, we can build now every single major and minor triad that there is on the piano. If you notice on the piano, there are 12 different half steps before they repeat. C, C, C sharp or D flat, D, D sharp or E flat, E, F, F sharp or G flat, G, G sharp or A flat, A, A sharp or B flat, B. And then the pattern continues over and over again. All right, so let's just say, let's, let's first talk about major triads. The way to create a major triad is first you're going to create or find your root note. The root note is gonna be the first note and that's gonna be the name of your chord. For example, let's just pick a random letter. Let's pick D. All right, so I'm gonna put my thumb right hand on D and there's my first note of my triad. In order to build the rest of the chord, we need to count four half steps for a major triad. So let's count four half steps. One, two, three, four. So this F sharp is going to be our middle note. And then from there, we're gonna count three half steps. One, two, three. And by combining all three, we've just played what's called a D major chord. Let's apply this major chord pattern, which is built by four half steps plus three half steps, starting on another key. Let's start on B. Let's play do B major, B. All right, so here's B. B is on the right of three black keys. Now we're gonna count four half steps from the B, so we won't count the, the root note. You don't count the root note as the, as the first one. You, count, you start counting right afterwards, so let's count four half steps. One, two, three, four. So now this D sharp note is your third or middle note. And then counting three from the D sharp, one, two, three half steps, B major. So B major, the chord looks a little bit strange. B, D sharp, F sharp, it has two black keys in it. Now notice with every single one of these triads, you wanna be using finger one, finger three, and finger five, your thumb, your, your third finger and your pinky. Of course, there are exceptions to this when playing them inside pieces, but for now, just get really comfortable playing your chords with those three fingers. Uh, let's do another one that starts on, say, a black key. So let's do, we'll call this F sharp. We could call it B flat as well. We're gonna call it F sharp. So from F sharp, we're gonna go up four half steps. One, two, three, four, that takes us to A sharp. And then from A sharp, we're gonna go up three half steps. One, two, three. This is F sharp major. So this is how we build all major triads. All right, now let's talk about minor triads. 
as the name implies, the term minor is going to indicate that the half steps coming first are going to be smaller. So with major triads, we had four half steps, then three half steps. With minor triads, we're going to have th three half steps and then four half steps. So the smaller number comes first, hence the term minor, minor triad. So we have three half steps followed by four half steps. So let's go back to that D earlier that we did. Now instead of playing D major, we're going to do D minor. So let's count three half steps from the D. One, two, three. That's our middle note. Our third is F. Then four half steps. One, two, three, four. A. So D minor is D, F, A. So you can see how now you could teach yourself any major or minor chord if you know this pattern. Now eventually you're not, you're not going to want to have to count you know these steps every single time you want to play it because it's not very practical. It's like thinking think about math, right? When you're figuring out like two plus two, you don't have to sit there and do the math. You just know two and two is four. So the same idea with your chords. Eventually, you're just going to know them. But this is how they're all built. So you could start on any chord, any note. I mean, and play a minor triad. So uh, let's start on B flat. So we're going to start on this black key, B flat, from this black key. I'm going to count up three half steps. One, two, three. Takes us to a D flat. And then four. One, two, three, four. So B flat minor is B flat, D flat, F. All right. So now with this knowledge of major and, and, and how to build major and minor triads, you can pretty much play any song out there. All right, now before I move on to step four, if you guys wouldn't mind leaving a like on this video and don't forget to subscribe and click that little bell notification so that you're uh, up to date with all new videos as I release them. Thanks so much for that. And now the fourth step to getting comfortable playing major and minor triads or three note chords is to be able to read them on chord charts and on sheet music. So I'm gonna show you how to do just that. We're gonna first start with chord charts. I use a website called Ultimate Guitar. Um, I'll put a link in the description. Um, but it's a great website for guitar chords and, and piano chords, really. You can use the same, it doesn't matter whether you're wanting to play the guitar or the piano, the, a chord is a chord, so um, you can play it on the piano just as it's written, and they do have little uh, pictures showing you how to play the chords, but we want to apply our knowledge of the half steps to be able to teach yourself any chord. So we're going to use, uh, we're going to use a couple songs as an example. Uh, today's song we're going to use is uh, Bad Habits by Ed Sheeran. So we're going to pull it up, and you'll see here we're uh, at the verse, on verse 1, uh, we're just going to start from the verse, we've got our first chord is B with a lowercase m, and that indicates a minor chord. So if you see a capital letter followed by a lowercase m, it means minor. Um, let's look at the next chord. We're going to come back and play it, but let's look at the next chord. The next chord says D Maj 7. Now, these are called extension. They're fancier versions, but really you can just remove the 7, and play a D major chord. The MAJ stands for major, M-A-J. So you can just play a D major chord. So Ultimate Guitar has a great function in settings on both the app and on, on the you know, desktop um, where you can simplify the chords and it's basically going to remove the fancier chords um, called extensions, which uh, if you look at the next chord, G sus 2, that is an, uh, another fancier chord. Uh, it's a suspended chord, but it's basically adding a note or replacing a note from the chord with another note. But all of these fancy chords are just uh, building blocks that you build off of your basic three note triads that we learned earlier. So really, uh, instead of just playing a G sus 2 chord, once it's simplified, it's just going to be a G chord. And it'll sound just great as a G chord. Um, so let's go over these chords um, for the verse. We have B minor, so we start on B, we go up three half steps because it's minor, and then four half steps, one, two, three, four, and B minor is B, D, F sharp. So with the left hand, your left hand can just play the same note that your right hand plays, uh, or play the same root note. The root note is the name of the chord, so this is a B minor chord, the B is being played by my thumb, the left hand can play the B. You can use any finger you want to use that to play that B, it just gives it a richer sound. So we, we're just going to hold the chords and sing. Every time, oh my goodness, this is high. I'm going to go low. Every time you come around. All right, the next chord, D major. Um, so we're going to shift to D. D major is D, 
count let's count four half steps because it's major one two three four one two three from the from the middle note we have d major here and then the left hand is just going to play the d note so come around come around you know i can't say no so the g chord i've just played it g one two three four one two three g or g major same thing and that repeats Every time the sun goes down, I let you take control. And it repeats. I can feel the paradise before my world implodes. And the night had something wonder. And then the last chord is an E minor. E minor, we'll count four half steps, or three half steps, excuse me, from the E, because it's minor. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. Wonderful. All right, there's the verse. All right, um, so as you can see, we were able to just use the knowledge of major and minor patterns of half steps. Again, major is four half steps, then three half steps. Minor is three half steps, then four half steps to learn a song really quickly. Let's use another song as an example. I'm going to use uh, See You Again by uh, Charlie Puth and Wiz Khalifa. So... I'm going to just pull up the first part of the song. I mean, there's an intro. We're just going to go to the chorus there at the beginning, though. Um, first chord, as you can see, is uh, G with a lowercase m, which is G minor. So we start on G minor. So three half steps. One, two, three. Then four. One, two, three, four. There's G minor. Left hand is just going to add the G, the root note. And you can sing. Um, it's been a long... Then... B flat major, so we got to find our B flat note, B flat, and now it's major because it just says B flat, capital B flat, so one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Been a long day. The next one, again, these are more obscure because they start on black keys, so that might be confusing at first, but this is E flat. If it says just E flat with no lowercase m again, so it's E flat major, so we find E flat. We count four half steps, one, two, three, four, then three, one, two, three, and this is E flat major, E flat, G, B flat. So, without you, my, and then we go back to the B flat chord we played a second ago. Friend, so, it's been a long day without you, my friend. And it keeps repeating. And I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. We've come a long way from where we began. Oh, I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. When I see you again. All right. So the other way to read these uh, same songs is with um, chords uh, or sheet music, excuse me. Uh, now, that's a little bit more involved and complex, but just so you can recognize it, all triads, whether they're major or minor on sheet music, are going to look like skips. They're going to go from a space to a space to a space, like a snowman. It's going to look like a snowman. Um, or it's going to look uh, like a snowman on lines, line to a line to a line, as you can see here. So you can, um, let's go back to Bad Habits again. And we saw a B minor chord. So you'll see that the bottom note here on the, on the staff is a B. And then the next one is going to be a space on D. And then the next one is going to be a space, which is F, which are just skips. You see I'm just skipping letters. And then the F, there's a sharp sign in front of that F which is why we have to sharp the F. So that's explained to you that, hey, this is a B minor chord. So it's a little bit different when we read music. Um, it's an entirely different skill, which you need to develop as well. But that's the same idea for all of these chords. So um, sometimes, once you get the habit of reading music, it's actually really simple because every single pattern of line, 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 or space, space, space is gonna be either a major or minor chord, and then in front of each note, they'll either be a sharp or a flat telling you to sharp or flat the white key. So for example, uh, the chord after the B minor um, is a D major, and as you can tell, there's the bottom note is a D, right? And then the sharp sign, there's a sharp sign in the middle because the middle note F is being sharped. So 
Remember, uh, and this is just another side note, that all triads are built off of thirds or skips of the music alphabet. So when reading it on sheet music, it's actually, it can be pretty easy once you get the, the hang of it because um, if you know, for example, that your bottom note is, say, a G, well, then you bring your thumb to a G, whichever G it is, and then you can, and you see the shape of these, you know, three, you know, lines or three spaces. In this case, it's a G, it would be a line, but it would be three lines. Then you'd play all three notes. And if one of those notes is, you know, flattened in the middle, for example, if we flatted the B in the middle, that would make a G minor, right? Because it would be three half steps from the G. So um, that would, that, that's basically how you uh, see triads, um, on sheet music. All right, guys, that's going to be it for today's video. If you have any questions, just uh, drop a comment and I'll be sure to get back to you as soon as possible. And I'll see you guys in the next one.